What's up, guys? Welcome to this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. I'm going to be sharing something that's a little out of the ordinary for me. Hold on. I got to get my mail. Let me put the brakes on. <laughs> Was that the brake? They don't work. Oh. But yeah. Do you want us to fix them for you? Is that all of us, too? Yeah, this one is also for you. Okay. There you go. Have you had to mace anyone today? No, not yet. Do you like it? I'll see ya, thank you. Oh. Dude, my truck is gonna go boom soon. I'm gonna show you what's behind door number one, which is something I have been working on for touch and go for about four or five months, but over the last month, I've been pretty heavily involved with getting this all set up and don't worry I'm gonna explain what this is I know it looks crazy and it is kind of crazy right now but I've got it set up this way so I could see everything figure out where everything was going because this is the first time I've installed something of this complexity what this is is a battery backup system we've got an inverter We've got a isolator conductor, we've got a fridge, and we've got a lithium ion server grade battery. This all supports all the electronics in this truck from the LED, the 12 volt LEDs, to anything that we add to the system later on. The main beauty about it is this battery right here, and I'm gonna get into why this is so cool, but let's jump into the front of the truck right now so I could show you guys what we've done underneath the hood. So people are familiar with backup battery systems. That, that's, uh, that's first and foremost in a lot of people's minds when they're building rigs that I gotta make sure I have two batteries so I can always start my truck. And historically, the way that's been managed is you just, you throw two big batteries in there. When your truck starts to die, you turn on the charger, or turn on the car so the alternator runs and fills your batteries back up. The problem with that is your alternator produces a ton of power. And once your batteries are full, they're full. The vol voltage regulator kicks in and you no longer fill your batteries. But these batteries are not big. To use the analogy of water, which is used with electrical all the time, think of this battery as like a, I don't know, like a five gallon bucket. And it can hold five gallons worth of electricity. Now, you have some devices that just sip electricity and you've got some devices that gulp electricity. A fridge uh, is gonna be taking some power. You're also, like a winch is gonna take a tremendous amount of power. And there's various other accessories, especially in new vehicles that are constantly taking power. And if you've only got a five gallon bucket full of energy, you're gonna run out. And then to take it one step further, that five gallon bucket You've got a fire hose with an alternator that is just spraying power everywhere, but your five gallon bucket can only hold five gallons. And once again, once it's met that, the voltage regulator kicks in, the fire hose turns off, and you've got what you've got. So this is a traditional setup. In this vehicle in particular, the, the owner of this used to have multiple batteries. He had a lithium battery over here. He had two AGM uh, batteries here. He had more batteries in the trunk. He had solar on the roof, and it, it was a complicated mess. So I've simplified, I know, I know it doesn't look like simplification, but it is simplification here because we have two batteries to run this whole thing. And we're able to use this alternator as the fire hose it was intended because not only can we fill up this, uh, this five gallon bucket, but the battery in the back is like an Olympic sized swimming pool. And so the alternator, the fire hose is gonna be dumping power into that Olympic sized swimming pool. And we're gonna have that power to, to power everything for a long, long time. So what that means is simplification in the fact that we have one starting battery. You don't have multiple batteries, you don't have to isolator combiners, you've got one battery that provides all the energy to your 12 volt stuff. And then the 48 volt battery feeds this guy. And I'll show you how it does that over here in the back of the truck. Okay, there, there's three or four things here that, that we need to worry about and I'll explain what they do as we go through them. 
This is the brains of the system. This is called Scotty, and it's made by a company called Safari. So I'm going to get into the weeds here, but just hang with me. The technology in electrical has just been growing leaps and bounds every year due to the shift to electric vehicles. And so uh, energy consumption, energy regeneration is all, the technology has skyrocketed. And the technology is out there in the Chevy Volts and the Teslas and all the other electric cars coming out. But the big but is you cannot use any of that, any of that power that's generated has to go to propulsion of the car, meaning that if you've got a hybrid electric car, the electric portion of that car, that goes to powering the wheels to make you go forward because it's all about emissions, being cleaner, decreased, uh, decreased gas and all that sort of thing. So that leaves you with a big massive battery full of power that you can't access because of emission standards. So what this company out in Australia did that was super clever, they isolated the technology that, that takes 12 volt drive power and stores it in these big batteries and they broke it out of the OEM manufacturer's ecosystem. So what this guy does is it takes the power from the alternator that's coming in at a 12 volt stream and it changes it to 48 volts and dumps it into this Olympic size swimming pool. So this is a 48 volt battery. Instead of being 12 volt, this is 48 volt. And it's a 100 amp hour, 48 volt battery. Doing the math, that comes out roughly to about 400 amp hours for a 12 volt system. So you store all your energy here in a 48 volt environment. And when it needs to be drawn down and used, whether it's through your AC converter, whether it's through the switch pros, whether it's through this fridge or the fridge in back, the energy goes into the Scotty and then is distributed back out, whether it's to a 12 volt bus bar or direct to the Scotty or into the wiring system for the back. And so even though it's a 12 volt system, the supply side is a 48 volt storage. And that's important because 48 volts, you're gonna have denser storage, you're gonna have more capacity. And um, when, when you think of, using the same water analogy, when you think of 48 volts, I want you to think of something that is like the size of a, like a big water main. That is a 48 volt water main. And then you've got a 12 volt, which is like a garden hose. And then the amperage, the current that is pushing is the pressure, the water pressure. So if you've got something that's pushing 100 amps through a 12 volt hose, it's, a, it's going to be a jet stream of power. Now that same amount of amperage pushed through a 48 volt big water pipe is gonna be, it's gonna have less. It's gonna have less heat loss. It's gonna have less, less, um, less loss from resistance. And it's, it's, an, it's um, a more efficient system. So that's why you kind of see the 48 volts starting to come into um, off-road overlanding because it's a more stable and efficient way of transporting and, and harnessing power. All the other stuff in here is to make this guy talk to the network so we can monitor it remotely. And it's a bunch of bells and whistles that you guys don't really need to worry about and I don't really understand. But suffice it to say, this is a game changer. Running these two guys right here, which is pretty much all you need, you can get away from having multiple battery banks. You have one giant Olympic sized swimming pool that your garden hose alternator is filling up as fast as it can and then when you draw down the 12 volts it's actually drawing down this so this battery is filling the 12 volt the little five gallon bucket is getting filled from the olympic size swimming pool so you can see just just with that right there you're gonna have a incredibly reliable and uh seemingly endless supply of power so I'll go into a little bit what these guys do, but I wanted to show you guys this thing. I, I'm super proud of how it's come out. I'm gonna brag a little bit here. This was, this pushed me. This, I understand electrical. I've done quite a bit of electrical in the past. I enjoy it. This is no joke. Uh, it's, it's complicated. It's dealing with a bunch of different voltages. It's dealing with shunts and, and all kinds of stuff that I have to learn what they do. So 
I apologize, I haven't got a video out in the last week or so. I've been, I've been knees deep in this because the owner of this truck is taking it on like a three week road trip here next Monday. So in addition to all the suspension work we did and the supercharger work we did, we've also done this whole electrical schematic setup. And so far so good. It's being commissioned by the company in Australia. They tuned it remotely, so it's gonna work with our alternator, basically seeing how much power is coming through the alternator so they can tell the battery what to expect and a bunch of other black magic that I didn't really understand. Now, if you've been with my channel for a while, you know that this is kind of out of my, uh, my wheelhouse. I, I generally focus on square bodies and building them up and restoring them, and there is a tie in here, so let me get to that. I'm a believer in making these trucks uh, reliable, uh, safe, uh, dependable, and, and also adding a lot of the modern amenities that have been developed over the years. We have some killer technology out there, whether it's the Switch Pros, whether it's the LS motors, whether it's the Holly standalone, whether it's the Magnum gearbox. I am all about cool technology, including it into my builds and including it into all these killer trucks that I, that I have access to. So that Toyota that you saw, that is my business partner's truck. And he is responsible for a lot of what you see around here. He's taken a, an investment in the channel and I hope you guys can start to see some of the, the dividends that this is producing. So the access to this kind of technology, the, the Safiri and, and the server grade battery, this is huge. I want to start digging into more advanced technologies and figure out how can I incorporate this into what I'm doing, which is truly a resto mod. When you are taking something that is old school, like a 68 Camaro, and you're upgrading it and bringing up to the standards of what people expect in 2022. You're adding, you're adding anti-lock brakes in, or you're adding cruise control, or, or in this case, we're adding a refrigerator and battery backup system that is not only reliable, but is incredibly robust and has a ton of power to it. So I, I know this was a little out of left field. I, I dig this stuff. I think it's cool. I think you guys are going to dig what I have coming up. But I want to bring in my new guy here. This is Ryan. Ryan, grab, grab that thing right here. You guys might know Ryan already. He's Ready Rig on Instagram and YouTube. He's got a ZR2 on 40s. And uh, Ryan has come alongside me, and we're just banking stuff out. This, this whole Merrick's Garage thing has gotten too big for me to just do by myself. And so with Ryan here, we're starting to, to kind of spread out and tackle a bunch of projects. I have a killer uh, video coming up on a 78 Blazer that you guys saw a couple weeks ago. I'm gonna be showing you guys how we do everything. And Ryan is, uh, he's a videographer, photographer just like me, and so he knows how to get good shots and how to frame it. And so you're gonna see a lot more activity and hopefully more video stuff. So tell, tell them a little bit about who you are and, and what your rig is all about. Wow, so uh, Instagram, I'm Ready Rig and YouTube, and I'm basically just showing um, some, some simple modifications for my truck so far, but it's gonna start to get a little bit more intense with some four link or three link trailing arms and stuff like that for just my ZR2, but I'm always down to work on some Tacomas and some square bodies and let's, uh, Basically just make our rigs more reliable and better and more fun. You know? More ready. Always ready. Ready rigs. Always ready. That's the name. <laughs> Tied it in right there. But yeah, um, expect more of this stuff. I'm gonna hopefully be a little bit more loose uh, with Ryan here to help film. We can just turn on the cameras and just do our thing sometimes, so it's not gonna be as, as edited or as polished, but I think that will allow us to bring more content to you guys. Uh, if you've been following along, I've been picking up lots of square bodies. I've got about six or seven now that we're gonna start just like dialing out. Uh, they're gonna be for sale. If someone's looking for a killer square body and, and you want me to build one for you, shoot me an email, james at merricksgarage.com and, and let's talk. I am totally down with building the most killer uh, custom and just kick ass square bodies I can. And if it means incorporating technology that is, that is hybrid electric, but if it, in, and it improves the overall product, then I'm down for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's lots more like this to come. 
if it was too, too much tech for you, you still made it through to the end, and so you must have liked something. Anyway, till next week, Merrick's Garage. <laughs>